uh, Ian Knight's search on product from Deloitte. Um, Ian, one of the hardest agendas I think you've inherited is the procurement agenda. Yeah. Um, so you've got pretty much all of what was OGC reporting up to you. Yeah. And in various conversations we've had this morning and other times, um, getting innovation and speed into procurement and indeed avoiding procuring things that don't need to be procured is, is quite a big agenda. I was wondering what your thinking is and progress so far. Yeah, um, two, two or three quick thoughts. Um, the first is, there's procurement of, what I'm afraid euphemistically, is commodity items. And if you're in that business, you know, I think I apologize for calling you a commodity. But uh, so the um, obvious examples being things like energy, um, electricity, gas, etc., that government consumes up and down the country. Until four or five years ago, individual departments and bodies procured all their energy themselves. They got you know, the sort of deal that a small to medium sized business might get by aggregating the spend <coughs> and going to the markets in a completely different way as whole of government. Uh, you know, we've been able to save 500 million pounds off the energy bill uh, of the country. And that's just purely by organizing ourselves better and going to the market once. So um, we've also had Sir Philip Green come and review the procurement function, and that's the area he's most concentrated on, is the sort of commodity level, and said, why when you can buy it in bulk and use your purchasing power and power of coming into government, do you not do so? Um, because, you know, you're just in this uh, sort of colloquial style, you're being robbed otherwise. And so the first part of our procurement reforms are going to be to identify what are those commodities and do them at whole government level um, and get the best, the very, very best deals that we can, uh, get them then implemented across the central government state, which we can directly control, and make them available to the wider public sector, well, uh, including local government, to tap into if those deals are right for them too. So that's the first big reform. The second big reform I think I've talked about is around the strategic <coughs> relationships, because although it starts off as a sort of uh, as they would put it, a sort of rain on their wallets in the first instance. The idea is to have a much better cross-government relationship with suppliers because we think we'll get better out of them and they think that they'll be able to get us to adopt even you know, better and broader ideas. So that's relatively easy. The third area is relatively hard, which is how do you change the regime and the landscape to get the SME sector in and to do so in a meaningful way. Um, it's really tough because you know you and I can all think of examples of things that have gone massively wrong in government. <coughs> and when you I won't name them in the public, but you source them back and it's some little company that has gone massively out of its depth with a product that's just you know grown a billion times bigger than it was meant to, and it's just collapsed in a heap and there's nowhere to go with it. So, you know, employing small and medium sized companies to deliver national scale solutions is really tough. Um, but I do think the ideas that the government has of breaking the contracts up into smaller parts, um, and in particular of uh, trying to get local procurement done uh, differently through um, involving SMEs. And frankly, I think this government is prepared to be braver on taking uh, what people perceive to be the rules uh, that's <coughs> and taking them on and saying, so, well, let's just, you know, if the, rule is, if the law is an ass, as they say, you know, we'll, we'll behave differently and see. And if it does get possible, <coughs> it's changing. If it's domestic, we'll change it. And if it's international, we'll lobby for it. 